Hello, welcome to the channel. My name's George and I haven't been around for a while. But here I am and today we're doing something a little bit different. On the bench today is nothing. A big empty space. Today we're going to look at isolation transformers and variax. This is my isolation transformer and it's slightly large and it weighs a lot. This is my Variac. It's quite large and it weighs quite a lot. What happens when you have two big ones? Well, you really need to connect them together. Now, all joking aside, both of these are fairly essential for safety. The isolation transformer is there to protect you. It uh, keeps you isolated from a ground reference. Do you need one that's rated at a thousand volt amps? Possibly not. It depends what you plan to do on your bench. Now a thousand volt amps roughly works out at around seven and a half amps, which is a reasonable amount of current at 240 volts. You know, most of the stuff you test on the bench will never come near that. Again, we have a Variac here, and this again is rated at UK, volt, uh, UK mains voltage, 240 volts at 8 amps. Now, why do I need something so big? Because they were cheap, and I mean I picked them up cheap. So that's that. Now, I could just wire them in like I used to with bits of wire and some plugs and just shove them in the wall. But I thought this time I would go for something a little bit safer. Now, I've been dealing with Chris from All The Gear No Idea. He's got a very good YouTube channel, and I'm quite happy to say I consider him a personal friend. I basically asked if he knew where I could get an enclosure that would be substantial enough to actually accommodate these two units and he came up one better he came up with a supplier and also he said i'll do a bit of work on it and i'll send it to you and for that i was very very grateful and i mean very very grateful very grateful i don't hurt anymore it was just a case of me deciding right okay how do i want it to look and we, we were bantering back and forth on, on how this thing was going to happen. And you'll see the work Chris did in a little video segment that I'll put up now.
was Chris's bit, and as you can see, Chris is an absolute whiz with the 3D stuff and the the diddling and the doodling and the, the jiggery pokery things. Me? I'm a rock ape. I can just manhandle bits of metal and put them in boxes. So over the last couple of days, I have been manhandling metal. And there are a couple of bits I'm going to show you, first of all. And we'll we'll go from there in stages and you can see how this thing's coming together. Okay, the first piece of metal I'm going to show you is this one. And it's a an L-shaped bit of metal and I have done a dry fit on things. I've drilled these holes here and I drilled the holes for this bracket and the din rail mounting which you'll see what it's used for later. I'm just going to mount the transformer on this plate for now. So now that's there, that's fitted. You, you think, well, why don't you just put it in the box? Well, I wanted to show what exactly I was going to do because it's not just going to be ordinary switches. The problem I have is that the socket itself can supply 32 amps of current. This will quite easily handle 8 amps of current. Your average switch that's not designed for anything more than you know, your, your sockets or anything like that is only going to be rated somewhere between 1 and 3 amps. So rather than just use an ordinary switch, I'm going to use a magnetic contactor, which is like an industrial relay. The reason for that is because of the chance of switching such heavy loads in I didn't want to burn out any contacts. Now to make this work, this particular relay uses 240 volts AC to trigger it. I'm going to be using different switches and buttons for various purposes. I will also be putting in one of those little Diddy digital voltmeters to show current and voltage coming through the system. I also have these Digi Diddy little LED voltage meters to show the supply voltage as well as the output voltage. So these are the bits. Now it's a case of putting it all in the box. And that again is fairly straightforward. As you saw in the little snippet, Chris has done a lot of work and he's done all of this drilling and cutting and uh, everything else. My floor space is already arranged. Here we go, let's, let's see if we can do this. So I'm gonna start with the Variac. So all I've got left to do now is wire it up. Right, let's explain how things work. Ignore the camera light in the back. That's just so that you can see what's going on. The mains comes in on this cable here. Obviously the first thing that happens is the earth wire goes to the copper earth terminal. That obviously then splits out to all the other metal panels in there. Now this is a contact block it's earthed at the base. So let's carry on. Comes in, there's a switch right down at the bottom here. From the switch, it then feeds all the lives into this block here, which is a four-way connect block. It comes in on this one and splits off. This is a joiner to the two sides, which then allows electricity to flow in all of those. These are the neutrals. I've switched both sides, live and neutral. The live goes off and pops into the relay. It also heads off through to the push buttons, which are here. Now, the push button activates the relay and that then allows the voltage to continue further on. Now, it will either go to the transformer and then the Variac, 
or it will bypass the isolation transformer and go straight to the variac. From there it goes into the circuit breaker obviously if there's an overload or a fault that will trip out and then to the output socket again you'll see that on the front there are various other monitoring meters and all sorts of other bits hence the thin bits of wire and uh, various bits and pieces there again I shall show you all of that when we get round to the demonstration okay demonstration time you're looking at the front of the unit albeit from a, a strange angle on either of the cameras but hey what can I say it works I've got here my dim bulb tester and that is in position plugged in it's just a bulb this is a shorting plug to test the bulb normally when you're testing something you have it out like that and um, you plug whatever you're testing in there right so how do we start this thing right first of all you turn it on and the only thing that lights up is the supply voltage light and that tells you that you know the incoming mains is on and it's currently at 243 volts fine we know that's good now nothing else is lit what we do then is we press the energize now at this point the output is enabled it's not live yet but it's allowed to work now I'm just gonna switch that off now what I want you to hear is the relay click over so I'm gonna be very quiet when I push that button that great big thump is that 20 amp contactor firing across and moving all those contacts into into play so we've got the output enabled but there's still no output at this point now at the where what we do now is we can either choose to go through the isolation transformer or not go through the isolation transformer now most of the time we'll go through the isolation transformer now you hear everything kicking up there because that's now activated both the isolation transformer and the variac we go from non-ouchy all the way round to big ouchy so you've got non-ouchy a bit ouchy more ouchy and big ouchy because hey you stick your tongue across it it's ouchy the output meter is lit up and that's showing the current output voltage and output current so let's spin this round and as we get to a bit ouchy we're around 75 volts there a bit ouchy is good enough this will give you your actual figure and you see 75 volts this bulb is drawing 150 milliamps now this is a 100 and 100 watt bulb and it's just a standard light bulb nothing special not LED no flashiness like that a bit more ouchy about 136 volts with a 241 supply and we can go all the way round to big ouchy 248 volts out for 241 in you know you're testing something and all of a sudden you see smoke lots of smoke well you want to switch it all off don't you you can punch that button and the output goes dead and I mean you can punch that button and the output goes dead there's no messing around there's no faffing it's just completely off now at this point you could push energize as many times as you like there is absolutely no way this unit will put any current out what you have to do first is reset the kill switch now we can push the button and away we go again now what I have done is I have left in the option for a second kill switch and all I have to do is wire that in and that goes in series with this one so that either of these being hit will drop the relay out and kill the power and this could be on a floating lead over here it doesn't have to be over there so that when the box is energized hitting that will also shut the box down 
and that's something I'm considering adding to it at a, a later date. I do have a schematic and this one was drawn by Chris, all the gear, no idea. Even I can follow this. Now I have made a change to this and well I've, I've made a couple of changes so if I get my pencil and I'll, I'll just show what I've changed. Um, this is a red lamp exactly the same but this is not a lamp this is the voltmeter so I'm going to cut that out that's the voltmeter for the supply the fuse is in the mains plug the switch is as normal what I have done as well is I've added in another switch here which is tied in with switch 2 and switch 4 so on the non-isolated I've added in uh, S W da, 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 3 3 yes 3 no SW2 dash N O 5 so I've added in this switch here so that when we're in the isolated position this normally open switch here here is closed so that it goes through the isolation transformer through here and through here and these two switches are ignored which are one and four the reason I thought that was because I didn't want this transformer just buzzing away for no reason at all so I thought to myself right what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the transformer off effectively so there is no current running through this transformer when we're in non-isolated mode so if we go over to non-isolated the only two switches that work are this one and this one and they go through bypassing the transformer completely and I did say about the emergency stop what you've got here SW4 normally closed one what I can do is I can break here and here and if I put in here SW5 N01 this is in series so this will also be another emergency stop button linked to the gang and if either that one or that one is pushed this circuit here drops out which releases the relay which opens the output contacts and so that it kills the output completely and you can just hit that on a one-off that's how the box works I shall put up a copy of this drawing with my notes on screen so that anybody who wishes to follow along at home and build something similar can do if you don't want to build it then fine don't so there we go my variac in a box power control station whatever you want to call it it's it's done it's complete thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed the video and you'll check out one of those or one of those that one that one and we shall see you again in the very near future thanks very much